Hi, I'm Melissa Rigi, the host of Truth Be Told. It's just a weekly government show that tries to help the residents learn a little bit a little bit more about their governance, what goes on at town hall, what goes on in the other town offices. And I ask any of you that watch the show or hear about it to let me know if you have a question or a topic you would ever like me to bring up on the show or even address in my town manager's reports. Uh, sometimes the show will actually go through those. If you haven't looked at them before, they're on the town's website under news. Um, we also have a Twitter feed that tries to put out information about the community and about the government. Today I have on our public health director, Karen Keene. She is probably a familiar face for any of you that watch your local government access channel because Karen has done show after show after show to try and educate the public on where we were during um, all during COVID. And unfortunately, again, right now as the numbers go up, but she does so much more than that. So although we are going to touch on COVID today because it wouldn't be responsible not to bring up some of the latest changes. I really want you to get to know your public health director and everything else she does for the community. So thank you, Karen, for being with um, being here with me today. It's always a pleasure to be around you anyway. Great to be here. Thanks, Melissa. Karen, start a little bit before we jump into COVID. Start a little bit by telling us um, about your staff because you've been able to grow the department a little bit. I know you need a little more um, through the past with us now, how many years? Seven, but in this department, five. Yeah. Five years. Tell us about your staff and, and what they do. Introduce us to them. Sure, absolutely. We are um, a small but mighty group of, of people here in the public health department. Um, there's myself as the director. Karen Kelleher is our health agent. Um, Rachel Milroy is our health technician, which is a new position which was created um, for three specific reasons, one of which is to be our fats, oils, and grease compliance officer. So she has a really good relationship with our restaurants in town um, to make sure that they're complying with that particular program. Um, then we have um, our part-time person who just joined us, Eileen, um, which is great. We have another part-time um, person assisting us with administrative work. Um, and a person that we could never, ever, ever do without is Margaret Coe, our administrative assistant, who really keeps this office running as well as it really does. We also work with a couple of contracted um, folks. We have a contracted food inspector who helps us with our food inspections. Um, as everyone knows in Plymouth, we have hundreds of restaurants here in Plymouth and also retail food establishments those have to be inspected at least twice a year. So we contract with um, an outside vendor to help us with those inspections. They're called ALSCO Food Group, and this is the third year that we've had them, and they're phenomenal. They're, they're fantastic. They're really building a great rapport with our restaurants in town, and we're really happy to have them. And very exciting to announce that we now have a permanent part-time public health nurse um, back on our staff. We used to have one on our staff that um, went away for a little bit, but now we're bringing her back and um, we're thrilled to have um, Jean and, and Zarello um, as our public health nurse here in the department. That's great though that you've been able to grow it because in a community of this size it was it was surprising that we were able to do as much as we did with three people mm -hmm. so many years. And I know as we look at the budget, the FY23 budget, the select board already have indicated quite a bit of support where if the residents need the service and we have to provide it, we have to have the staff to do it. And we also have to understand that these same employees also, they have time off. They mm -hmm. have to be in the office and you still need to provide that service. So that kind of overlap and, and having some additional people that do the responsibilities, it works and we need right. it. Karen, tell me a little bit about your board of health, the board itself. Right, we have a five member board um, in, in Plymouth, the board is appointed by the select board. So in some towns, the board's actually elected. And when the board's elected, then they um, hire the public health department staff. In Plymouth, the board is um, appointed by the board of selectmen. So we work with the board, but we are still um, hired by um, the town through the town manager's office. Um, our board, is so well-rounded and so well-educated and so focused on helping our residents. And it's chaired by Dr. Barry Potvin, who has been a member of the board now for several years. Um, he, this is his second year as chair. 
um, just amazing information that all five of them bring. We have um, Dr. Potvin, we have two nurses, um, Dennis Swift is an RN, um, Nancy is an RN, uh, Susan Ahern brings with her 30, I think 30 years of food inspector experience. Um, she is now retired, um, but she was a food inspector for the city of Boston. So she's seen some pretty interesting things in her time and she brings a lot of um, different perspective to things when we start talking about um, things on the board. Um, and then our new member, newest member um, is um, Anne, who is Anne Kahn, who has joined us and she is amazing as well. Um, she is a um, psychologist here in Plymouth and um, she definitely brings also another perspective, a different perspective. Um, one of the human side sometimes when, um, you know, not so much the scientific side, more the human side, which is nice. So the board, though their accolades are amazing, also balance out each other. Um, so it's very interesting to see how that dynamic works during our meetings. And we meet twice a month. We meet the second and fourth Wednesday of every month. Um, and they are recorded, um, played back on PAC TV. And I think that's important because as residents do want to know what is happening with their government, one of the best ways to do that is to pop on that local government access channel and watch some of these meetings. You don't have to sit through all of them. Yeah. I think one of the questions that we get is, well, what kind of matters do the Board of Health take up? So, Karen, if you could think of almost a pie chart, some of the top issues, obviously septic, people come to the Board of Health for their septic systems, which yeah. might be strange, but if you think about that, so much of our town is... Um, we don't have everybody on town, town sewer, so they have to have their own septic systems, but we also have wells. So when you think about public health, you can imagine why that comes before the Board of Health, but what other things, Karen, is the, takes up the majority of their time? Well, um, septic definitely is the, one of the first things that we always talk about when we have our meetings, but then we go into what our major topics are. Lately, of course, it's been COVID. Um, we want to talk about if we need to implement any types of policies or procedures as far as COVID is concerned. We talk about what our numbers look like in town. We talk about, um, you know, if we've had any COVID violations. Um, you know, our town has been absolutely phenomenal. Our residents have been phenomenal, too, about following the guidelines that have been set forth by the governor that we've followed here um, in Plymouth. Then we also go into other things. We'll, we might talk about... Um, you know, what other things we can bring to the town. We'll talk, recently we've talked about um, hoarding. You know, we have a hoarding task force that um, we work with with other towns in the area um, in case we have a hoarding situation and, and someone or someone's family member reaches out to us and they're, they're asking for help. So we've talked about hoarding. We have talked about um, opioid addiction. We've talked about um, the youth in Plymouth and how we can reach out to them. How can we get them more involved? Um, we've had a citizen advisory council that works with the board. It's a five member advisory council of, of citizens who want to become more involved with public health. So we talk about things that they're working on. Um, we also will listen to um, anyone who's received a violation. And, and sometimes we have to give violations to people that we license, whether it be a restaurant, a stable, um, you know, a, a Title V situation. Um, and then the board will hear those people if they want to request um, you know, a way to waive their, their fee that's attached to that, that violation. Um, so the, there's a portion of the meeting that we'll talk about that as well. Um, and you also, um, I know that I have to sometimes refer housing calls to you, whether mm -hmm. somebody in a housing situation, and you know, you never really think about this, but you think about all the, uh, the people in this town, the residents in this town that rent, and they have a landlord and there may be something mm -hmm. wrong with the building or the facility and right. you're involved in that. Karen, who actually does those inspections? Is that you when this situation escalates to that level? Yes, absolutely. I'm the person who takes the initial phone call as well. So anything that has to do with the housing situation between a tenant and the landlord will come to me. Um, and then I take a, um, a report um, when the, um, the renter will call me and I'll take the report. And then I reach out to the landlord and I get information from the landlord. I will go to do a housing inspection. Um, we'll look at the state sanitary code as far as um, human habitation. 
um, is concerned, we'll fill out a form together. I always you know, want um, the tenant to show me exactly what's happening. We fill out the form, I sign the form, the tenant signs the form, and then I'll send an order letter if necessary to the landlord. Um, and different items have different time periods where they uh, need to be corrected. Some things have to be corrected within 24 hours. If someone doesn't have heat, that needs to be corrected within 24 hours, or that landlord needs to find a different place for that person to live while that heat is fixed. Some mm. things might, I might give them seven days to correct, and some things have up to 30 days to correct. Um, a lot, what, I, what I'm happy to say is a lot of times we can just mediate. You know, we act as a mediator and we bring the landlord and the tenant together and we do reach a resolution. Um, and sometimes it just, they need that third person. You know, they might have tried to work it out together, but something just didn't work. So that third person, which is me through our office, is able to mediate both sides and work to fix what needs to be corrected. Um, so we do have a lot of housing calls. Um, I'm concerned that we'll receive even more um, when the eviction moratorium is over. Mm, I bet, because sometimes, um, I think when the, it was some of these people when they're at their wit's end, and then they also are facing eviction or there's a non-payment issue and their frustration level has risen, I think your call volume goes up because then they start to look around and they say, hey, you know, this window's been broken or Absolutely. this and and maybe that's why I haven't been able to pay. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, see, it makes it, that's a really tough part of your job because you're trying to balance both people's needs. They have the tenants and what they need to have to mm -hmm. live the environment, but also from the landlord's perspective, it may not be about the building at all. Correct. Yep. All right, mosquitoes. So one of the things that we haven't done about, God, I don't even remember last spring, I don't think that we did a lot with Tripoli e or mosquitoes, mm -hmm. but now we're watching the news and we're seeing because we've had such a wet season um, what's happening with um, mosquitoes and what your office does? So really good news as far as mosquitoes is concerned for Plymouth County is we have not had any cases of Tripoli or West Nile virus, which is phenomenal. So um, we do keep track of that. Um, mosquitoes are caught on a weekly basis and tested in all counties in Massachusetts and they're reported back to the individual public health offices so that we can let our residents know. So that's always posted on our website as well if anything, change, anything should change. And I also put that in my director's report, which is part of the minutes for each board of health meeting. But we're not going to wood. We've been really lucky this year. But one thing that people should keep doing, um, and I always advise folks to do this, there are things, steps you can take in order to not have mosquitoes in your yard or around your area. And the biggest one is get rid of your freestanding water. People yeah, that would mean... That would be my bird bath, and I love my bird bath. Well, it really means your wheelbarrow, like oh. that you left out and it rains, um, or your kiddie pool that your kids were playing in, you know, because it was a hot day, but now I'm like, oh, that's a cooler day, so I just left it out there. Well, and the kids aren't using it. Well, the mosquitoes might think, well, that's a great place for us to hang out, so let's go hang out there. So any type of freestanding water is always advised to, you know, take a look around your yard, um, that would also lead me to our other topic, which includes things around your yard, which would be we have a problem with rats. Um, and we have a problem with rats all over town. It's not just one street. It's not just one neighborhood. It's everywhere. And the number one thing that people can do, again, is take a look around your yard. Unfortunately, if you have bird feeders, take a look at where the extra hey. bird feeder is going. I know my mother said the same thing, very upset with me, but it's true. If you have bird seed all around your yard and the birds are leaving it there, that's an invitation for any type of small mammal to come out and eat them. And we have having a huge increase in small mammal population in the state of Massachusetts and here in Plymouth as well, which are rats, mice, rabbits, chipmunks, and squirrels. So right, I can't believe you could put rabbits in the same category. <laughs> It's rats, but we'll let that one go for today. And then we have to make sure that we're not making our yards a welcoming spot for those five little creatures. Um, so bird seed, don't feed your cat or dog outside. And if you do, take the bowls in, um, in right away when they're done eating. Um, again, if you have a garden and you have some vegetables that have fallen on the ground, remove those. Don't let them just decompose there. That's also an invitation. 
and make sure all your trash is in a receptacle that is not something that someone can chew through or that could just smell something. You don't think they try and get into my compost bin, do you? I've been watching that thing and spinning it and adding the water. And I mean, I keep opening up thinking it's going to be magic dirt and nothing is happening. It looks <laughs> And my husband was going to tease me one day. He bought a big bag of dirt. He was going to empty one side <laughs> and fill it with dirt so he can say, look it, it happened to you. It but, actually happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those seem pretty safe, though, from the, from the little rodents. <laughs> um, I want to talk about short-term rentals. And then because we, are, we have about 10 minutes or so left, we need to talk about COVID. But can you run us through short-term rentals first and what your department is doing with those? Sure, we have been working with the Board of Health on short-term rentals now for probably three years. Um, when the process started, it was very confrontational. There, um, there was sort of the board versus people who actually own short-term rentals. But then we had a change in our board makeup and um, Dr. Poffin took a very different approach, which was um, let's work together with the short-term rental community and let's see what we can do moving forward. So we, um, through the Board of Health, um, we had a five-member short-term rental um, working group put together um, and who went through um, a, by and a bylaw and put together a bylaw for short-term rentals here in Plymouth. Um, brought it back to the board. The board members worked with the five-member working group committee um, through a couple of meetings to tweak those, um, that bylaw um, should go through the process where we would still know who owned a short-term rental in Plymouth. We would have a name and the local address attached to that rental. Um, we would have certain minimum standards that they would have to meet for safety. Um, and then they would have to also um, grant us access if we ever had a complaint or a safety violation that we could have an inspection done at that property. Um, and finally, last meeting, the working group um, voted unanimously on the bylaw that we have submitted to um, um, Marley McCollum, the assistant town manager, um, and also the board of health voted unanimously wow, to support so the wording. Great. Yep, in yeah. the short term rental bylaw. So we have all sides included. And the, I have to say the working group um, included people who own short-term rentals, people who work for hotels that really weren't too thrilled about short-term rentals, um, and then people who really didn't have a say one way or the other. So it was a really interesting group of people that came together to work on that particular um, bylaw. And we're and we were thrilled. I mean, we were really excited when it passed unanimously on both sides because it really shows um, it was a lot of work, but it really shows what can happen when two groups in Plymouth work together for the same cause and leave their egos at the door. And, right. that's, oh. and that's exactly what happened. So now we're moving on bringing that to, um, you know, through the town meeting process. Yeah, so you'll be at October town meeting with that. That's one. Yes. Yeah. We, you know, we have, uh, I'm not going to have a chance to go through some of the things that we have for October town meeting. But usually the fall town meeting is a little bit uh, not quite as exciting. We have great things for fall town meeting. So yeah. I know we're gearing up for it and it's a lot of work, but there's some, there's some great projects on there. Um, COVID, yes. talking about changing numbers, you and I are going to do now and the board has supported. We're going to go yeah. back to mandatory masking. Talk to me about it. So a um, couple of things are happening with COVID and as anyone who looks at our numbers, either on the web, our website, public health, you know, website or the town's website can see that our numbers are indeed increasing, unfortunately. Um, those numbers reflect um, a couple of different things. Um, unfortunately, children under the age of 12 who cannot be vaccinated are um, becoming infected with the COVID virus. Luckily, they're not getting um, very sick, but they certainly do have symptoms. Um, the other group are people who are having what's called the vaccinated breakthrough disease, meaning they have been vaccinated, they are fully vaccinated, but they are having a breakthrough disease. Um, we're not quite sure if it's because of the Delta variant, which is a very strong and contagious um, variant of COVID, or um, what a, the, there's a lot of research going on to try to figure out why this is indeed happening. When it does happen, from the research that we have from the cases that we have here in Plymouth, they're not getting quite as sick as people who had COVID without being vaccinated um, experience previously. 
And the third group are people who just have not received a vaccination and that's the majority. So if anything, I would certainly still encourage people who have not been vaccinated for whatever reason they have may have not been vaccinated as of yet, if they can, if they're not being, you know, um, some people out there have received guidance from their own physician, not for whatever reason, not to be vaccinated and that's a different story. But for those people who have been on the fence, they're not quite sure, again, we would encourage you to be vaccinated as the number one best way to stop the virus from spreading. So because of these higher numbers, because of the variant, um, and because of this breakthrough, um, vaccinated breakthrough disease, we as the Board of Health, with this also working with the select board, will now make masks mandatory um, for people who visit at town hall and also for all staff. Right. Well, we'll start. I know, Margaret, your office is helping us get all the signs. We'll start to repost all the buildings I had to go back and dig through and find all my old masks and pull them out. And, you know, before we had them everywhere, in our car, in our back, in our desk, you know, it was almost like your your, your cheaters. They were everywhere. Oh, it's true. You know, I think some of us have finally put some of them away. So, well, thank <laughs> you. That was really helpful, Karen. It's always nice to have you on and spend time with you. I think that's going to do it for this portion, but I'm definitely going to have you back in the future. You're such a regular now. You don't even think... <laughs> about the TV thing. I mean, don't you remember the days when we would get a little nervous before we went on? And oh, that's Absolutely. Just... <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. I'm going to jump real quick to the 1620 spotlight. Um, I just want to tell the public, and it's in my town manager's report, that there is such a great video out there. It was sent to me by Lee Hartman, the director of planning and development, and it's a virtual tour of the historic colonial records. If you get a chance to watch this, it's a one hour virtual tour video, please do so. It has some great people in it, some awesome town staff, a legislative delegation. It's wonderfully done and uh, it's very informative. So if you have a chance to do that, I hope you get to uh, really take a look at all the different colonial records that the Plymouth County Register of Deeds is able to show in this special presentation. So that's the time that we have today. On Truth Be Told, I'm looking forward to seeing you all next week when we'll have another great guest on. And if you have any topic, again, that you'd like me to bring up, please get in touch with me. I'm pretty reachable. You can call, email, or text me anytime. Thank you and have a great week.